Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Here's our topic of a day, inflation. Inflation is a global topic. Some of the most powerful people on this planet are the same people responsible for the most inflation. Coincidence? I think not. You might think it's just a way of printing liquidity for short-term gain and no consequence because, after all, everything is tethered to the dollar since we abolished the Bretton Woods system in 1971. So, even if you're holding pounds, euros, or yen, it doesn't matter because you're equally screwed. Our hyperinflation is your hyperinflation. Enjoy! In conclusion, the Federal Reserve is run by hyperinflation fetishists. But here's the thing, they're not doing it for money, they're doing it because they're perverts and they find it to be extremely, extremely hot. Now, let's talk about something completely unrelated. Tribal Hunter is a completely innocent game where you play as an anfro lizard who is sent to guard over the land. You fight, you protect the innocent. You uh, consume your enemies by uh, ventilating them directly into your mouth. <laughs> and it's really funny because if you eat too much, he gets large. <laughs> oh God, imagine that. <laughs> and what if he ate even more and got even larger. Well, that would be crazy. But don't eat too much or you're gonna pop. This is an allegory for your blood vessels, which are going to pop if you keep going down this road. Because soon enough, the only way you can keep going down this road is in a motorized mobility scooter. Answer me this, what will you do when Elon Musk turns off the Tesla battery in the middle of the woods? That's right, you're going to be kissed to death by a, a pack of nanny dogs who just broke out of a local nursery. And guess what? Breakfast was free infants ago. You're the main course. Think about that next time you're engorging yourself like the hungry, hungry caterpillar that you are. This game plays like a brawler platformer Metroidvania. It's like the old Metroids if Samus was or could become heavily pregnant. And this grants her gameplay advantages. It's much the same way. When you're small, you're very quick, you're very nimble, and you can platform really easily. When you're large, you hit like a truck. Your damage, your animations, your hitbox, they all scale with your stomach content. However, you become both vertically and horizontally challenged when each footstep is the equivalent of a quake in Asia. Jumping is the least of your concern. This might not be politically correct to say, but there's no way to sugarcoat it without uh, making you even larger. You're a fat fuck. So how do we shed those pounds? Well, you sit down and you metabolize your food in a matter of seconds. When the morbidly obese blame it on metabolism, this is exactly what they mean. This is what they're competing against. This goddamn lizard just metabolized, and I calculated this by the way, I took an average slaughter size 250 pound hog and uh, he ate three of those, which in a span of 15 seconds, he has digested completely. That's over half a million calories reabsorbed into his body. And still we're asking stupid questions like, why can he breathe fire? Here's a question, why wouldn't he? Sitting down quickly trades satiety for health, and it's your primary way of healing up between fights. It's actually genius design. Like, think about it. You're making a game and you get really happy when things get larger. That dopamine hits hard. Like coronary heart disease. But where do we go from here? It's already half a screen, and the commission artist is just not responding anymore. After the last request, there's no sign of them. Their postal address leads us to a monastery in Middle England. But if we have to deflate and get smaller as part of a gameplay mechanic, just like free refills at a Denny's, we can get large over and over again. You get power-ups, you get stronger, and you get access to more levels. Naturally, the most common and relevant form of power-up is uh, increasing your stomach capacity. Now you might think, oh, my capacity just got 10 points higher. And like me, you might initially miss that firing of a neurons, that transmission of a synapse, where you realize, oh, oh, this this isn't my final form. I can get larger. And so there's this uh, strange drive pushing you forward where you're kind of morbidly fascinated. Because you see, there's many forms of motivation, and ours is to see how large we can possibly get. Who is this game for? Why are we covering it? Why is it important? That's a very simple answer. First, they came for the furry inflationists, and I did not speak out, for I was not a furry inflationist. And then they came for me, and there was no one left 
left to speak out. That's why we defend them now and we get on good terms so that during the upcoming political upheaval, they can return the favor and vor our enemies. Due to the nature of my work, I cover some really old and really niche games. Problem is, it's hard to get an original copy, so I depend on friends and family to send me a working copy of Bad Rats 2, Punjabi pre-cracked no virus. One of the most stable ways to do this is torrenting, or as it's more commonly known, trying before buying. Unfortunately, my internet provider and the people who work there are the product of a brother and sister who loved each other a little too much, as they cannot distinguish between illegal torrenting and me trying to download a legitimate copy of a game I already own. So they throttle my connection and my internet grinds to a halt. Thank you Verizon for the opportunity to pay $89.99 monthly, all for the luxury of having no internet. Despite this, like a battered housewife, I insisted they're doing it because they love me. Then, about a month later, I received a cease and desist from Verizon, telling me that I'm most definitely going to jail, giving me a list of racially motivated gangs I can choose to join once inside. I've never owned a paper shredder before, but I gotta tell you, it's strangely satisfying. That's my third letter this week. So I realized my internet provider really doesn't know what's best for me. So instead, I chose to install ExpressVPN. When I run ExpressVPN, my internet traffic goes through a secure encrypted server. So my ISP can't throttle my download speed because they can't see what I'm doing, nor can they see the sites I visit when I when I'm working hard at my job and sell my mental illness to advertisers. It's incredibly easy to use. All I had to do is download the app, tap a single button, and just like that, I'm fully secured. And ExpressVPN does all this without slowing my connection. So stop letting internet providers arbitrarily decide what you can and can't do with something you pay good money for every month. Protect yourself today from the misinformed decisions of mega corporations who don't care if you live or die by using the same VPN I've trusted since 2019. Three years, and they never failed me once. How about that for an endorsement? Sign up now and you can get free months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash Seth or clicking the link in the description box below. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Gameplay is pretty straightforward. You help out your local village by beating the shit out of everything and consuming their dead bodies. For an island guardian, you're actually quite terrifying, and the village itself is a really nice place. What a beautiful day on God's earth. Hmm, I wonder, what shall I do today? Work on myself? Develop my skills? Care for my friends and family? I know, I'll spend my entire life online and become increasingly weird and isolated, divorced from reality. Self-esteem? <laughs> What's that? I like the little townspeople. They give you a sense of community and a purpose for why you're doing what you're doing. I also found out the flying mini game is a really good way to make money. On the other hand, it's really difficult to explain to friends the nature of your anger. There's not many ways to say, I popped. Like Icarus, I flew too close to the sun. Or in this case, I flew too close to one chicken dinner too many. And I have to repeat the entire stage. You can play using a keyboard or controller, but I strongly recommend a controller for your own comfort and sanity. Personally, I think the platforming is incredibly difficult. I've had situations where I can clear the entire level, but I can't make a single jump to save my life. And then I proceed to repeatedly eat the same trap until I die. You have two spells, fire and egg. What do they do? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Fire is fire, and egg can make a cow forcibly pregnant. Not really much more to say about that. We know the rest. The milk industry, reptile eggs. Some would argue you can't have one without the other. You get extra skills and abilities by defeating bosses, which in turn can be used to access new areas. Music is pretty nice. You hear the same tracks often, but they're not grating or pronounced, so they don't really feel repetitive. Some sounds are not balanced for the rest of the game. Each time I hit an armored pig, my speakers shake and my table travels. In town, you can buy items and I strongly recommend them. They can save your life or a trip back home, which can be quite a bit of backtracking. Thankfully, you unlock the ability to fast travel relatively early into the game. I actually love it because uh, the animation is based on your current weight. So if you're thin, you can tell it's a very pleasant ride. If you're not, well, it's clearly more of a struggle to stay in the air. At some point, I realize you can intentionally get caught and bloated by slime plants, break free, spit out the slimes, kill them, and generate infinite XP. Unfortunately, I have to witness something unsettling each time I do this. So no, I don't think it's an exploit. It's an intentional form of torture. Everything you gain is outweighed by everything you lose, namely the ability to close your eyes ever again 
without that image burned into your skull. Enemies are varied and will harm you in one of two ways. One, they can kill you. Two, they can forcibly feed you until you explode. This is a similar experience to visiting grandma. The longer you stay, the higher your risk of cardiac arrest. She won't kill you out of hatred. She'll drown you in the pancake syrup river of love. Also, the death sequence for getting too full is arguably more difficult to swallow. Food is both your strength and weakness. You must constantly toe the line between obesity and death. They say video games are not the greatest medium for storytelling, but I disagree. When you see your obese lizard grappling the side of a cliff, his face says it all. Without words, he evokes one singular emotion concern. The enemy placement in this game is brutal. Forget those two archers in An Orlando that will seem like a pleasant memory when you're getting stunlocked by a roast turkey. You get XP pretty generously and this lets you upgrade your abilities at any time. Many of these are locked until you get later into the game. I don't have any recommendations except uh, get healing on your punches because relying on digestion for health is okay but you can't do magic on an empty stomach and that's a shame because playing the game as a tactical egg artillery is objectively the best experience. Imagine seeing something pouring from the sky. And it's either gonna kill you or make you pregnant. That's, that's quite terrifying. Critique, I hate slimes. I really dislike them, that is all. Besides that, sometimes animations really don't look like they should affect you, but they do. Like, you can feel a hammer's shockwave when you're not even on the same floor. It's a minor complaint and they'll probably fix this. You know what? It's a furry developer. In all likelihood, they will fix this and they're currently taking notes. That's the difference. You want something done? Stop recruiting on LinkedIn. Go to Fur Affinity instead. Also, some of the controls can be awkward, but you can remap them. And also, you're just gonna get used to it. Reverse critique. I really like the idle animations. That is all. In conclusion, I give Tribal Hunter a full out of belly. It was there for me during a difficult period of my life. Each time I made any money, I would flash my wads of cash outside my wallet and comically lose them to a strong gust of wind each time. Eventually, I was left with nothing, just me and a small bag of crack. I knew I had to get my life together. So I smoked the whole bag, using them to outrun cars and siphon gasoline from their tanks, usually at the same time. I would describe the experience like using the devil trigger from Devil May Cry. I used high gasoline prices to in turn buy more crack, which I used to call fueling my addiction. I found this joke to be very amusing. I would repeat it often to the same homeless man I would hound for hours, running circles around him as he cried and wept. And here I am today. Thank you, Tribal Hunter, for giving me my life back. Hey, sorry for stretching out the video, but I'm happy to inform you all that Tribal Hunter is now on GOG. Follow my GOG link at forward slash UNICEF for 15% off. For every dollar you spend, I will personally steal a liter of clean drinking water from the children that need it most. Forget charities that make things better. I promise I'll make them worse. The developers told us they're really close to a 1.0 release, so even if you buy now, the game is going to leave early access in a couple of days. As always, more more content to come, so stay tuned or don't. It's an open door policy. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful, unless you're mentally unstable, in which case I recommend comprehensive psychiatric therapy. Have a good one.